Why, hello there, seventh grade. Well, okay, we've been learning about how to make inferences with just one population. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make inferences about two populations. Let's take a look. Look at this example here. It says compare the medians of two populations with the same measure of variation. We'll go over what measure of variation means. So I have my population or samples of my population for team A and sample of my population for team B over here. Okay, and um, let's see what it's saying. A, show that the two teams have the same measure of variation. That is the difference between the three quartiles and the same interquartile range. So remember the three quartiles are within this box. And so that's Q1, that's Q2, which is the median, and that's Q3. And here's the lower and upper extremes. Let's look at team B. So in team B, to find the quartiles, we have to find Q1 here, which is the lower quartile. Q2 is the median. Q3 is the upper quartile here. And then we have my lower extreme and then the upper extreme. So we're going to find the differences between the various quartiles. So let's take a look. Okay. So team A, um, they did Q2 minus Q1 and they got 10 pounds. And then they did Q3 minus Q2 and they got 10 pounds. And the interquartile range is Q3, which is 250 for team A right here. Q3, 250, minus Q1, which is right here for team A, which is 230, which is 20 pounds. And then let's look at team B. Um, so they did Q2 minus Q1, they got 10. Q3 minus Q2, 10. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1 for team B. So it's Q3, which is 240, minus Q1, which is 220. And they got 20 pounds. So the difference between the quartiles and the interquartile range are the same for the two teams. Okay, so this example um, falls on the, under the category of um, two populations with the same measure of variation. So let's look at this. It says express the difference in median weight in terms of the interquartile range. What does this mean? Well, we have to use the median weight and we have to find the difference in median weight between team A and team B. And then we're going to divide it by the interquartile range because it's the same, right? The interquartile range is 20 here and 20 here. So basically we're going to do this. We're going to find the difference in median age and then divide it by the interquartile range. We want to make sure that the difference is positive. So make sure you just take the bigger median minus the smaller median. Okay, and you're going to see here, okay, let me just make my screen a tad bit bigger. My video is running so you guys can see what I wrote on the board, okay. Um, so for team A, the median is 240 and the interquartile range is 20, which is what we already found in part A. And then for team B, the median is 230 and the interquartile range is 20, which we already found in part A. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the differences in mean. So I'm going to take the bigger, I'm sorry, median, differences in median at the in the numerator of the fraction. Okay, so it's 240 minus 230, which is 10, and then the interquartile range is 20. And this actually um, simplifies to one half, doesn't it? Okay. So, um, sorry. So the difference between um, the difference in median weight between the two teams is half the interquartile range. Okay, one half the interquartile range. All right. I'm just gonna make my video screen a tad smaller now. Okay. 
Um, so let's look here. What's, what inference can you draw about the weight distributions of the players on the two teams? Okay, so it looks like here. Let's let's take a look. Okay, so team A and team B. Okay, so <clears throat> it looks like um, remember how from here to here, right? From the lower extreme to the um, first quartile, it's twenty five percent, right? And then from Q1 to Q2 is 25%. From Q2 to Q3 is 25%. And Q3 to the upper extreme is 25%, right? So let, let's just look at it and see if we can use some percentages to compare the two teams, all right, by looking at this um, box plot. So I see that, hmm, well, I can say maybe one, two, three. And then, so that would be 75% of team A is heavier than 1, 2, 50% of team B. Okay, do you see that? Or you can say 50% of team B weighs less than 75% of team A. Okay. Mm. Here's some other ways you can look at it too. Um, so for example, 50% of team A players are heavier than the upper quartile team B. So let's see, so 50% of the team A players, so here's 50%, are heavier than the upper quartile of team B. So this is the upper quartile, 240, okay? So you see that their 50% is heavier than 240. Okay, or you can also look at it like only 25% of team B players are heavier than the median of A, right? And you see that the median of A is 240, right? Only 25% of the team B is heavier than the median of team A. And there's, you know, other ways you can just infer from this. Um, so... So it looks like team A players are heavier in general, okay? Because you see that the median of team A is actually higher than the median of team B, and also it seems like most of the data is spread a bit higher than team B's data, okay? So team A players are generally heavier than team A. I'm sorry, team A's players are heavier than team B generally, okay? Can you pause the video and try to do this, please, on your own? I'm just going to increase this, okay? Um, and I'll see you when you're ready, all right? Hi, you must be ready, okay? So we're going to show that the two groups have the same measure of variation. That is the difference between the quartiles in the same interquartile range. And um, these are two different groups of children and their ages, okay? So for part A, okay, I did it here, okay? So I'm, I'm taking the quartiles Q1, Q2, and Q3 and finding the differences, okay? So here, here's the data for group one, okay? And the interquartile range is here. And you can pause the video to make sure to check, compare your answers with what I got. And group twos is here, okay, all right. And I realized, oh, I didn't really <laughs> find the difference. I just wrote it, didn't I? Okay, so Q3 minus Q2 is one. And here, Q3 minus Q2 is one, okay. What about here? Q2 minus Q1 here is two. What about here? Q2 minus Q1 is two. Right. The interquartile range here is three, and for here it's three. Okay, so um, it looks like they have the same measure of variation. All right. Okay, and then, oops, sorry, not yet. We're not celebrating yet. Okay, let's look at B. Um, express a, express a difference in median age in terms of interquartile range. Okay, so first you want to find the median from the box plot. Group 1's median is here, which is 10. Group 2's median is here, which is 12, and I wrote it here, okay? And um, 
The interquartile range, we already figured it out on the previous board, is 3. Okay, And remember, how do we find, express the difference in median age in terms of interquartile range? Well, it's we got to take the difference in the median and the numerator and then divide it by the um, interquartile range. So it's 12 minus 10 divided by 3, which is 2 thirds. Okay, um, here's difference in terms of the interquartile range. Oh, sorry, I keep going. I am just jumping on the celebration part. Okay, let's look at C. What inference can you draw about the age distributions of the children in two groups. Okay, well, I, I'm gonna just try to see because I know this is 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. Same thing here 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. So I'm gonna just try to, you know, pick and choose to see what I can infer. Um, hmm. So it looks like 50% of the children way less than one, two, three, seventy-five percent of group two. Do you see that? Okay. Um, or you can you can think of it as well seventy-five percent of group two weighs more than fifty percent of group one's children. Okay. Um, also look at the median. Median of group two is larger, is greater than the median of group one, okay? So you can kind of infer that, well, it seems like the children in group two are generally older, okay? Yeah. All right. Now we can finally celebrate, yeah. Okay. Let's look at this other example. Mm, I wonder, I think I might have to make my videos from the tab smaller. Okay. Um, so we're going to use box, box plots to compare two populations again. And let's see, a class of students completed two science tests. The scores are presented in the box plots here. And we're going to find the median and range of each test. So the median for test one, it's here, it's 50, and the median for test two, it's here, it's 55. And then the range is the upper extreme minus the lower extreme, okay? So we have 90 for the range for test one and 80 for the range for test two. And which test had a wider spread of data? Well, to find that information, we're gonna look at the range. The bigger the range, the bigger the wider spread of data. It looks like test one, one's range is larger than test two's range. So test one had um, a wider spread of data. Okay, um, let's look at C. On which test did the class perform better? Hmm. Well, I don't know. When you look at the median, it looks like the median of test two is higher than the median of test one, but I can't just only look at the median, right? I gotta, look, cause look at the upper extreme here, it's 95. And then the upper extreme here is 90. Hmm. But let me see. What else can we infer from here? Okay. It looks like, oh, okay. So I know here, let's look at the boxes. So it looks like here, that's 25, 25, right? So that's 50% that's represented in the box. So 50% of the students on test one scored between 35 and 65 while 50% of the students um, for test two scored between 45 and 70. So it looks like generally um, test two, students did better on test two than test one okay, because of that inference, all right? All right, now it's your turn. Please do number three on your own and when you're ready, play the video. Okay, and I'm just gonna increase my video screen because I'm gonna show you some answers on the board when you're ready to check. All right, see you soon. All right, hello. Um, so let's look here. Two classes took a math test. Um, the results are summarized in the box plot right here. Okay, for which class are the data more spread out? Okay, so you you wanna find the range and 
I did it over here, okay? So I see um, for the range for class A is 71 and the range for class B is 65, okay? So 71 shows a wider spread of data, so class A um, has a wider spread of data. Okay. And then for B, it says comment on the performance of the two classes. Oh, okay, so we're going to make some inferences with some percentages and things like that. Okay, well first, uh, the median of class A is 66 and the median of class B is 60. So the median is higher for class A than for class B. Okay, it looks like, I'm going to look within here, okay. Um, between Q1 and Q3, which represents 50% of the class. So 50% of the class for class A scored between 46 and 70. And for class B, 50% of the class scored between 40 and 80. Hmm. So, oh dear. So which one do you think did better? Okay. Um, and I see then also um, when I look at 50% from class A scored between 24 and 66 right here. And then 50% of the class in class B scored between 22 and 60. Okay? So in this case here, it looks like who did better. Okay? Um, it looks like possibly class A did better from this comparison here, okay? Because there's it's a little bit higher, okay, in scoring. Now let's get the second part, okay? So I'm gonna look at this here, right here. So between Q2 and then the upper quartile, I'm sorry, Q2 and the upper extreme. So that's 50% of the data, right? So 50% of the students scored between 66 and 95 in class A, and then class B, 50% of the students scored between 60 and 87. So again, it looks like the higher score is with class A. So I think class A generally did better than class B. All right, you guys are doing well. Thank you for just trying to stick through the video and doing your lessons. Okay, this is the last example, I promise. Okay, so let's take a look. We're going to compare two populations that have the same mean, but different mean absolute deviation. So let's take a look. Here is a table that shows game scores of Mark and Jason. So here's Mark's scores here, and here are Jason's scores. So first thing, we're going to find the mean of Max and Jason, okay? And it's done for you right here, and you know how to find the mean now, right? Um, and so Mark's mean score is 4.4, and Jason's mean score is 4.4. So they, they have the same mean. So does that mean they did exactly the same? Well, let's dive deeper. Oops. So part B says calculate the mean absolute deviation of Mark's and Jason's scores, okay? So here is a table of their data, okay? So this is Mark's and this is Jason's and this is Mark's data, here's the mean and there's the distance of data from the mean. Here are Jason's scores, Jason's mean and then distance of the data from the mean. And then I see here the sum um, so MAD for the mean absolute deviation for Mark is 1.28 and for Jason it's 3. So who has a bigger mean absolute deviation? It looks like Jason does, right? So generally his um, scores um, distance from the mean is 3, 3 points, and then for Mark is 1.28. So it looks like maybe Mark plays more consistently in terms of scoring and Jason is a bit more sporadic than Mark, okay? Um, oh, and then now let's look here for part C. We're going to draw separate dot plots for Mark scores and Jason scores, okay, and here they are. And hmm, so here's the mean, and again, we can kind of see that's true, isn't it, with Mark? His scores are a bit closer to the mean, but then Jason's scores 
are kind of spread out more compared to mark scores. Okay, so you know, it, this is basically what you know um, I was sharing. It's just that Jason um, scores is not clustered around the mean as much as marks. Okay, and yeah, mark scores just seem to be more consistent all around compared to Jason scores. All right, um, please try and do number four on your own. Pause the video. All right, I'll be waiting. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so um, what we're doing is we're gonna see the number of questions two groups of students got right on there. Is it a math test? Yep, it's a math test. Okay, so find the mean number of correct answers for each group. Okay, so here it is over here. Group A's mean score is 12, group B's mean score is 12. So it's the same. But that doesn't necessarily mean they both did equally well. Okay, um, so let's look deeper. All right here is the mean absolute deviation for um, group A and group B. So 4.4 for group B, I'm sorry, four, yeah, 4.4 for group A and 2.4 for group B. Oh. It looks whose data values are more spread out. Mm, it looks like group A's data values are more spread out because it's 4.4 versus 2.1, and 4.4 is greater than 2.4. Okay. Um, all right. Now we're gonna draw dot plots. Okay, and here it is. And yeah, let's look here. Okay. And we can see that does confirm what we just were thinking was true by looking at the mean absolute deviation. So here's group A stop plots, here's group B stop plots. Group A scores are a bit further spread from the mean compared to group B scores. They are closer to the mean, aren't they? Okay, so confirms our mean absolute deviation. And um, what conclusion or interpret the statistics in which we just did and then what conclusion can you make let's get the what conclusion can you make about the performance of the two groups who do you think does more consistent group a or group b it looks like group b is a bit more consistent with their scoring because you know um, they kind of are closer their scores are more clustered around the mean compared to group a scores okay so Group B does mm, scores more uniformly than group A. Okay. Ooh, we're at the end of the road for today. All right. Well, thank you for sticking through it and have a relaxing day. Bye.